And so we come on to the advanced monochrome entries and we'll start with Warcry. And the author here has tried to give some emotion as part of the image by uh, exactly as the title says, giving a bit of a war cry. And just to kind of enhance that feeling, um, it looks like the uh, the model, the, the lady is wearing some kind of chain mail as well. I like the expression on the face as part of taking a portrait. There's nothing distracting that is in the image. Um, you've still got catch lights that are in the eyes and it's sharp where it needs to be as well. I think as part of, of kind of a monochrome conversion as well, for me, being as this is the advanced section, I'm looking for probably a little bit more modelling as part of the uh, the image that is presented. A bit more kind of play on light, more to do with kind of shadow and texture. For me, I think that the lighting has been quite even on both sides. Now, normally as part of a young lady um, or, uh, or when you're taking portraits of females, then absolutely beauty style lighting always works far better. But when you're trying to portray an emotion um, like this lady is here and adding kind of props as well, the chain mail, probably a little more play, a bit more harsher lighting to add kind of a bit more of a feel um, for me, probably would have improved the image. I find the overall image it is more kind of mid grey all the way through. I've seen some images in kind of exhibitions where it's been taken more, um, where the lady has been more portrait looking out into an empty space. Um, possibly try something like that or as part of the title the war cry could you have added some kind of propping to, to give me that feel as well um, so that was that image the next image that we are going to look at is called time for tea and this image I like the idea, it's kind of a, a country house setting. And I can see the interaction between the people. However, they are quite small in the frame. You've probably had to balance between trying to get the car in, the people in, and obviously that wonderful country house as well. I do wonder, even though you've displayed it or you've presented it as a monochrome file, what it would have actually looked like as part of a colour file instead i'm sure you know i'm trying to imagine is the car like a burgundy color you've then got the stone it looks like it's been quite a pleasant day as part of lighting as well so a blue sky and so i, I wondered how a kind of a, a color feel to the file could have possibly looked however you have got a, a decent tonal range that's in in the file so there's nothing burnt out there is detail in the highlights. I think for me though, it, there's, there's more action going on with the group of people and unfortunately, as, as part of what is kind of the composition, it just looks a little small and almost a little static uh, with what's going on. The next image that we'll look at is called the Tree Serpent. And as part of this, the author has, has presented it once again with that quite attractive key line. So I commend the author for thinking about the presentation of that. They've then, it looks like, put a quite a, a harsh vignette um, around, the, um, around the image as well. Whether there were things distracting on the, the, on the, the top and bottom corners, I'm not quite sure. Um, for me, possibly I wouldn't have put such a harsh vignette. Um, when you actually look at the tree serpent, um, is it a fallen log? Is it a picture of, um, is it a, a carving? A local artist has done something like that. I think as part of the file and the angle that it's been taken, it, it's quite difficult to know that it is some kind of snake serpent with, with what has been presented there. Um, if I didn't have the title, I'd really struggle to know what I'm looking at 
as well. It can always be difficult to take pictures of, of other people's uh, hot artwork and present it. But I'm hoping, you know, you've gone to this place that you've taken pictures from lots of different angles to see if you can then come up with um, some kind of suitable composition. There isn't anything distracting in the background as such. It's just that I felt that some of the images further on that have got the awards just had a more attractive appeal for me i think one of the criterias that i look at as part of judging is do i want to go back and look at the image again um, and i think for me once i've seen this image i probably want to know uh, what the next image is going to look like there's nothing to really kind of grab my attention to go back and keep looking at again the next image is called puppy wants ice cream and it's a street documentary style feel. So as part of this, it looks like it's quite a, a busy atmosphere. You've got people walking by. Um, yeah, I, and I can see what the author has tried to, to capture. I think that the puppy, especially pulling on the lead, that adds for me a little bit of tension and kind of the owner saying, oh, come on, um, I want to get home or I want to get to, and I have my ice cream instead i think as part of the title uh, puppy wants ice cream i think that the being being probably uh, a little bit more critical the the puppy is looking more at the owner and not towards the ice cream van which is in the top right hand corner as such um so so as part of that maybe you wanted to possibly adjust the title I like the people in the background by the shop. You can see that the that they are they have got some kind of connection to the dog as well. You can see there. You have got people with either kind of the ice cream seller with the, with your back to um, to you taking the photograph, and you've got people walking out of the scene. But you you've made sure as part of your framing that you haven't got half a person as such. Um, documentary photography and especially street photography quite a lot of what happens is completely outside of your control um, it's just more to do with how you frame what's going on but you know I still think that you you've captured an interesting scene especially with, with that lead being taut as well uh, and the dog kind of dragging back so the next image we'll look at is called my pal Charlie And I congratulate the author for trying to, uh, you know, taking pictures of, of animals because they never want to do what you expect them to do. So you have got the uh, the dog's attention as part of that, rather like a human portrait. You go straight to the eyes. And, you, and I think for me, you do have detail in the eyes. You do have um, catch lights as well. There isn't anything distracting really as part of the scene. Um, you know, it looks like that you, you've crouched down towards the dog's level as well. You're not kind of um, an awful lot taller, therefore looking down on the dog. A bit more kind of eye to eye, which for me is, is pleasing as well. The reason why this, I didn't feel, made it into the awards is whether the dog has moved and you've got slightly sh slower shutter speed or that um, you've not used um, a big enough depth of field, whether you've used kind of F4, F5.6, when actually you might have needed probably F8 just to get a little bit more depth of field because the nose of the dog, um, even though um, it, you know it's quite large, is still relatively out of focus towards the eyes compared to the eyes um, as well so I think it's probably more movement in the dog I like the texture detail all the way through as part of the fur I think that's converted quite nicely to monochrome but I think it's for me because uh, you know a proportion of the dog's face um, isn't sharp for me just lets it down ever so slightly so the next image that we'll look at is called uh, Eyes of the Tiger. And very, very dominant as part of, you know, what's been presented. The author's presented it right in the centre of the frame. I like the catch lights in the eyes as well. 
And also as part of that face, it does convert quite nicely to monochrome with all of the fur detail as well. For me, I think probably what, what let it down as much as it is quite dominant um, within the frame is more that it's just the tiger's head and I haven't got a body associated with the head. And I wonder why the author has presented it like that. So whether it's been taken in, you know, whether it is uh, alive or, it, you know, it has been killed and it's been stuffed, I'm not sure. Um, I can't really tell as part of what's been presented. Um, but I wondered, uh, you know, if there was a body present, whether it would have been more advantageous to include the body and not just have a for me it looks like more of a head floating on a black background um, it's sharp where it needs to be i think the lighting has been fairly consistent and so your camera has captured that so you haven't really had much uh, struggle to do with the shadows and highlights as part of the frame uh, i think um, it's just that composition for me that lets it down and the final image that we'll look at before we get to the awards is called Amaryllis. And yeah, I think the, the author has probably chosen the right angle, gone in close, made sure the centre of the flower is sharp where it needs to be. Also, um, kind of the stain in the leaves, the centre, the, the main focal point is just off centre of the composition as well. I've also got as part of the position that the leaves are in the stem, I've got that, di that diagonal composition as well. So I can just about say that it runs from bottom left to top right. I think that's a, a pleasing composition as well. It's fairly dark within the background. Um, that's allowed the leaf detail really to kind of come through. But similar to kind of one of the other um, images I uh, are commenting on about the afternoon tea. Um, I wonder why the author has presented it as a monochrome file and not a colour file. I'm sure there's colour as part of the overall scene. Um, if you are going to present it uh, uh, as a monochrome, the lighting for me has got to be quite dynamic. Uh, the subject has got to be really, really quite powerful as well. I wondered whether this would be more suitable as um, a colour file as well. The way that it it has been kind of presented and the lighting, um, is it strong enough? Um, for me, quite a lot of the leaves are more of a mid-grey running all the way through as well. I don't mind the tight composition. Um, it's just that probably as part of your the way that it's been converted, probably try, um, can I suggest the author try and play around with the curves function in Photoshop, that might then just add a little bit more tonal detail all the way through. So now we, we come on to the awards and the first one we'll look at is called Lowry Bridge Symmetry and yes it is a famous scene um, you know, quite a lot of us have been there. I like, yes, there is symmetry, but also as part of that dynamic angle, I can move in from either the left or the right. Those then concrete or steel beams, I think they are concrete, then lead me into the frame as well. They act as, as a guide or also the kind of the glass panels on the left and the right. They're forcing me down a, a view. For me, it's all about architecture. I think that you've taken it just at the right time of, uh, of the kind of the evening as such. It looks like that you've still got a little bit of light in the sky. And also you've got star detail, which for me just adds something a little bit extra within that dark space. I think that there's plenty of detail all the way through. It's sharp. It looks like you've used a tripod, probably F8, F11, maybe F16, pin sharp all the way through some people would say well you know it could just do with a person in the foreground uh to you know to fill that space but for me i think what you've wanted to do is, is just have the pure architecture uh you've got lots of lines lots of curves 
Um, and then you've got the dark, imposing building in the background. And I think for me that that makes a pleasing composition. Um, and you've made sure that uh, you know everything fits together and is nicely balanced. So that one for me gets a commended. And the other one that gets a commended is called Lady Stardust. And I found this this portrait um, pleasing as well. Once again, it, potentially there would have been a quite a plain black black background, um, but however, there is detail there, whether it's been put in afterwards or part of the backdrop. It's also very difficult to know what to do with people's hands. And I think probably having a connection um, with her kind of almost holding her hat, I think that's pleasing. Once again, as part of a portrait, I can go straight to the eyes. It's got, they've got, both eyes have got both strong catch lights as well. And also I think having the fur hat and the fur over her shoulder as well, um, that works. Also from the way that she's dressed as well, it just gives an air of the character as well she looks quite comfortable about posing as well also you know just thinking about that that light and shadow for me yes i think that the the, the eye on the the left hand side um it, it is slightly more in shadow but there is still detail and her cheek on the right hand side just has a little bit more light so I, so for me i think that works quite well she's looking over her shoulder she's not completely square onto the photographer and looking back as well so not many kind of creases um, within her neck the kind of the skin on her neck which sometimes can can look unsightly as part of a portrait I think that's been avoided so it looks like the photographer the model know exactly what they're doing and quite a pleasing portrait as well so we move on to the highly commended and the first highly commended is called Uh, is called Barrier. And I looked at this uh, uh, quite a while and I, I liked a couple of things about this. I liked kind of almost the solitude of, uh, of the benches. Um, it's quite a restful scene as well. Um, so for me, that worked. I liked that you could move in from almost kind of the left-hand side of the frame and the way kind of the curvature of the benches, the way the curvature of the barrier um, lead you in to the picture as well. The benches getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Also, it looks like that you've used quite a, a, a long exposure, possibly a couple of seconds. You've got movement in the sky, so movement within a static image as well. Um, that for me adds more interest. I also like the shape and the texture that's in the clouds as well. You've got some darker clouds, you've got some lighter areas as well. I also think as part of the uh, the monochrome conversion, you've got some fairly dark tones. I've got a black. I can move all the way to a white as well. Some people would say, well, actually, would it be, you know, and, and I was thinking the same having a person, just having something, as much as you've got all of these curves leading you into the frame, does it get to the point where when you move into the frame, you then start to move out of the frame as well, because there's nothing there as a very, very hard stop. But actually, I just quite liked the simplicity of the scene. Um, and so for me, that is a worthy, highly commended. And the other one that we'll look at is called Barrier. And I thought this one was different as well. I liked, first of all, the converging verticals. I know a number of photographers probably would have zoomed out a little bit and probably put the verticals vertical. Um, but here I like that they are imposing into the frame once again, you've used it as a viewpoint, so you're forcing me down into um, into what is probably the main focal point, which is the old Brighton Pier, if I'm not um, too mistaken as well. So it stops me and my interest going out the left and the right. I also think having the person as well, just within that kind of um, opportune moment, right in the middle 
of the frame. You can see the silhouette. It also then acts as a point of scale for seeing how big these, uh, I think that they are steel pillars are as well. Then having the pier in the background with kind of minimal sea with the tide and then also that wonderful sky as well. You've then just positioned yourself just to make sure that you can see some of the rays from the sun on the right hand side of the frame. So you've kind of got it just coming half from behind that steel pillar. And I think that works as well. I'd just be very tempted just to make sure that it's not completely burnt out in that area. Um, it's probably just a, a little bit of burning that, that you might need um, as part of that. But I still think it works together and I still think it's very, very dynamic and unusual as well. And so that gets my uh, second highly commended. And then we come on to the awards and the first one is into the turn and it's got everything that a sports shot really should have i like the panning motion i can see movement in the wheels you've then got a dynamic angle on the bike as well you can see that the rider's leading uh, leaning into the corner i can also see kind of the edge of the grass at the bottom of the frame i can see the track and i can then see when the grass starts again as well I can see the rider's face. There is there's room for the bike to move into. It's absolutely pin sharp all the way across. There's nothing distracting in the background, but also crucially, it's not completely uh, black as well. You can still see some of the detail of the safety barriers as well. And I think that'll do very well for you in competition. So congratulations to the author. And they get a third. My second place goes to the Boiler Man. And I think as part of the portraits that, um, that we've looked at tonight so far, I found this one for me the most interesting uh, as well. I like the character, so I've got space to move into. The character acts as the stop on the right hand side. I can see the connection. Um, the photographer's got the, the person's attention as well. Done very, very well to make sure they've got catch lights contact with the eyes, but also made sure that they have got very, very limited reflections in the glasses as well. So you've probably positioned, you've probably thought about it and, and looked through your viewfinder just before you've taken the picture. Not concerned that they've cut off the top of the hat because I think that there is enough hat to tell me or for me to imagine what the rest of the hat looks like. I also think as part of the coat, um, as part of the scarf that he's wearing as well and the beard tells me what kind of person he is as well, um, kind of an engineer. And also then in the background, um, picture of a, a boiler, there's writing, there's detail, there's rivets going on as well. It kind of it sets the scene. Um, it's a non distracting background, but adds to the detail of the overall. For me, the brightest part of the scene is uh, the person's face as well. So you go there straight away as a focal point. But then you can move around the scene, but always come back to the brightest part of the scene. And that one for me is a very, very worthy second, which means then the winner of the section is called the falconers and i i felt this this was um just very very different first of all you've got that tri that triangular composition between uh, the bird um the obviously the the owner of the falconer and then the lady in the background holding another bird as well um Dare I say it's possibly a, a, a composition, um, but um, even if it's not, I still think the elements fit together. I like the castle in the uh, the background as well. It's not distracting at all. But I think for me, what kind of really jumps out is the bird is the most powerful uh, part of the scene. Very, very dominant. Um, 
almost kind of covers three quarters of the frame, a lot closer to the photographer, and then more kind of the characters more in the background. Um, usually when we see this kind of thing, the character, the person, so it would be the falconer in this case, would be far more dominant than the bird. Here, the author's played with it, done something a little bit different, and almost reversed that feeling as well, so the bird far more dominant. And I think it really does work as well. I like that the expression of the bird's the mouth as well. You can kind of almost feel it, the bird coming towards you in flight, wanting to duck as well. And for me, uh, that is my worthy third, uh, my first place, sorry. So therefore, that ends the advanced monochrome section.